All right, yalla. Good afternoon. The Secretary General delivered a video message to the Brussels Conference on Syria and said that it, that it, excuse me, let's try this again. All right, good afternoon. The Secretary General delivered a video message to the Brussels Conference on Syria today and said that in this eighth year of war, the scale of humanitarian needs in Syria remains staggering. More than 13 million people are living in desperate conditions, exposed to relentless violence and persistent violations of international law. He said that at a recent Security Council retreat a few days ago in Sweden, he, seen, he sensed a strong commitment to humanitarian access and to overcoming the obstacles to the delivery of aid to all Syrians. As he appealed for the remarkable generosity shown by humanitarian donors last year to be sustained and indeed, if possible, increased. Emergency Relief Coordinator Mark Lowcock said that he expected pledging by donors to reach $4.4 billion by 2018 by the end of today, rather, the second day of the conference. <clears throat> er, meanwhile, Ursula Mueller, the Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, uh, briefed the Security Council on Syria this morning. She once again expressed the concern that medical items have been removed from UN aid convoys by the Syrian government, and she gave an overall picture of the humanitarian situation throughout the country. The, uh, her remarks are available to you. And also today, the fact-finding uh, mission uh, team of the OPCW said they carried out a visit to a second location in Douma. It also, the team members also collected samples at the site. The samples will be brought back together with other samples to the OPCW in a laboratory in Rijksvik in the Netherlands. They will be split and then dispatched for analysis to other OPCW-approved laboratories. <clears throat> um, the Secretary General this afternoon will speak at 3 p.m. in the Security Council meeting on peace building and sustaining peace. As he made clear in his remarks to the General Assembly yesterday, we need the strong support, support of both the Security Council and the General Assembly to build on and sustain peace across the continuum from prevention, conflict resolution, peacekeeping to peace building, and then long-term development. He will underscore that the central message of this report on peace building and sustaining peace is that we need to enhance the coherence of international efforts in support of national governments and their people. And our humanitarian colleagues uh, tell us they are deeply concerned by the escalation of the conflict in Kachin State in Myanmar. Thousands of civilians have been reportedly displaced by renewed fighting between the Myanmar military and the Kachin Independence Army, while many others are trapped in conflict-affected areas unable to flee. These are grave protection concerns for the communities as a result. The United Nations assessment team met with displaced civilians in one area, Namti, on uh, Monday, that is early this week, and identified high levels of immediate need, notably food, water, shelter, health care, water, and sanitation. A local uh, authorities and humanitarian partners are now moving to respond, but access to the UN and international humanitarian partners to civilian population in need continues to be extremely limited in catching, notably in non-government controlled areas. The UN calls on all parties to, the, to respect their obligations under international humanitarian law. Humanitarians must be able to access and provide assistance to those in need. The parties must take constant care to spare civilians, and civilians should be able to safely and voluntarily return to their homes as soon as the conditions allow. And today is World Malaria Day, and on this occasion, UNICEF recalls that every two minutes a child dies of malaria. Although preventable and treatable, rem malaria remains in many regions of the world a major public health problem. 91 countries currently experience ongoing malaria transmission, and in 2016 alone, 216 million new cases were reportedly uh, reported, and approximately 445,000 people died of the disease, most of them children. Progress on global malaria control is slipping, with cases on the increase. Four out of five malaria deaths occur in one of 15 countries, most of them in sub-Saharan Africa, with more than one in three deaths 
taking place in Nigeria and the Democratic Republic of the Congo only. On the positive side, six countries have been certified as having eliminated malaria in the last decade, meaning they have achieved at least three consecutive years with no local cases. And those are Morocco, Turkmenistan, Armenia, the Maldives, Sri Lanka, and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, and uh, press encounters uh, today, following uh, my briefing, Mr. Varma will be here to brief you on behalf of the PGA this afternoon at 3.30 p.m. in this room. There'll be a briefing by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Venezuela, Jorge Areza. Then at 5 p.m., Jean-Pierre Lacroix, Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations, will be the Security Council stakeout following the high-level meeting on the UN Multidimensional Integrated Stabilization Mission in Mali support for the G5 Sahel Force. And I will end here and take your questions. Mr. Klein. Uh, yes. Uh, is the Secretary General uh, formulating any, uh, I guess what one of the uh, ambassadors used the term this morning, a cre creative solution or alternative on setting up a um, attribution mechanism chemical weapons use in, in Syria. Uh, he was quoted as saying that he would use his good offices to assist. Uh, could you elaborate on what's being considered? Uh, no, I'm not at liberty to elaborate on anything at this point. Obviously, the Secretary General uh, is very keen to see a mechanism that would attribute uh, uh, responsibility uh, if if uh, chemical weapons were, were shown to be uh, to be used, discussions are, are continuing with Security Council uh, members. But I will leave it at that for the time being. Mr. Lee. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, you may have seen them, but if not, I'd like to ask you about them. There are published reports that uh, the United Arab Emirates uh, is um, seeking to create an offer position to Mr. Jahangir Khan, a current UN official, in the same way that, that Bernardino Leon moved from being the UN envoy in Libya to working for the diplomatic one. It said that they're seeking a counterterrorism post for him. And it's also said that Mr. Ismail Old Sheikh Ahmed recently visited the UAE <coughs> and sought a UAE funded position. Uh, I don't know, can you distinguish? One, would it be against UN rules for a, a current UN official? To be sure. seeking on, a on, job on the yeah. on Mr. Jahangir Khan, as far as I understand, those reports are false. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, Ismail uh, on Ismail Sheikh Ahmed, he no longer works uh, with the United Nations, so I have no way to, to verify uh, what his whereabouts are. And I know that he uh, discharged his role as special envoy with uh, complete impartiality and only keeping the the interests of the United Nations uh, at the center of his work. Is, are there any kind of what there, what's called anti-revolving door provisions, meaning would, would the Secretary General view it as, as, a, as normal and fine if a recent UN official went to work and, and went to, and I mean, it's not, you could say it's hypothetical, but since it happened in the case of, of, of Bernardino Leon, what, is, what are the current rules and best practices for UN officials Look, when they I think, leave uh, an Envoy post? Everyone expects people to use uh, their, their, best, uh, their best judgment. Evelyn. In Ghouta, for example, uh, where there are airstrikes, which can only be done by Damascus and no one else has an air force that's willing to strike civilians, um, is the object there to starve people so they for surrender at which point they move into the crowd uh, you know I'm, I'm not a uh, we are not a party to the civil war I think you need to ask those who have the the armament and no. who are dropping the bombs and are pulling the trigger what their goal is our goal is to see an end to the violence and our goal is to make sure that all Syrians uh, have access to humanitarian aid and we help them relive, uh, rebuild their country Olga Thanks, Steph. Um, French president and U.S. president are now discussing in Washington some possible changes in the GCPOA. Uh, I wonder if uh, UN thinks um, UN can be part of uh, UN is ready to work on the new uh, nuclear deal if it happens. Well, a, a couple of points to to make. I think, as the Secretary General has said uh, repeatedly, he believes that the JCPOA is a positive and major. Uh, 
uh, diplomatic uh, achievement and should be maintained. And as you know, the JCPOA was also uh, endorsed uh, by the Security Council, I think, in Resolution 2231. Uh, that being said, the Secretary General of the UN is not a, the Secretary General is not a a, a party uh, to the uh, signatory of the uh, of, of the agreement. Uh, but the Secretary General's position has been clear from the beginning. He believes it's a very important agreement and that it should be maintained. Just a follow up, but do you see any areas uh, this deal can be um, added and changed? Look, I think we can build on. Uh, we must build on the, um, the important achievements to preserve the non-proliferation regime, which is a cornerstone of our global security, and we also believe that the JCPOA contributes to regional peace and security. Merci, Stéphane. Um, on Myanmar, uh, there is no special envoy uh, yet appointed by the Secretary General. Is it normal? That, <laughs> well, a, a, that's a statement of fact. Um, what is normal and not normal, uh, I have stopped uh, commenting on. Uh, that being said, I do expect uh, an announcement uh, in the coming days or shortly on the on the envoy. I will only uh, risk uh, my tattered reputation to a certain point, Mr. Abadi, and then uh, Edie. Thank you, Stefan. During the current debate on peace building. The Secretary General, the President of the General Assembly, and numerous delegates have emphasized the uh, concept of prevention. How does one explain that only meager resources, a little bit over one million dollars, are devoted to preventive diplomacy? Well, I would explain, you know, I, I think that's a question to um, uh, Perhaps to those who allocate the budget, uh, the Secretary General has repeatedly and has uh, called for greater resources and greater emphasis to be put on prevention. Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. The OPCW um, announced not long ago that a second yep. team has gone into Duma. Um, is the UN security team that did the assessment, are they still there? Yeah, Do I mean, we, we continue to uh, support them logistically, including through security, which is also the responsibility of the, uh, of the Syrian government and others who are in, in the region. But the UN continues to provide whatever support, logistical support we can uh, to the OPCW. Um, is, is there, have you, has the UN gotten any indication at all of um, when we might see some results from... No, I, I think that's that's a question to be asked in The Hague. Oh, Ben, sorry, and then we'll go back to you. Yeah, just two quick questions. Um, you mentioned there was, unless I missed it, was there any readout from uh, the meeting with uh, Foreign Minister Zarif? And then you just mentioned JCPO being... Uh, 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 creating regional stability. What do you mean by that? There's not much stability in the Middle East right now. I don't see where JCPOA has led to that. Well, I think, you know, one, you could always imagine what things would be without it. Uh, that's, you know, I, I, it's, you know, stability is, uh, can always be improved and it could be, uh, there could be less of it. But you're uh, saying it's, it, I, we think it's, an, we think it's an important, uh, we think the JCPOA is an important part of uh, of stabilizing the region. The um, obviously, I think, it comes in no surprise that uh, the discussions with the farm, farm minister Zarif uh, did include discussions on the JCPOA. The secretary general reiterated what I've just said, which is his uh, support uh, for the agreement. Um, and uh, the Secretary General also stressed the importance of resuming the Syria and Yemen political processes in his discussion with Foreign Minister Zarif. Linda, and then we'll go to second helpings. <laughs> Thank you, Steph. Following up on Ben's question regarding the JCPOA, um, we know you've said that the Secretary General supports it, mm -hmm. believes it could, uh, it's better to have it than not. But with the United States and possibly Brits, French, or European nations believing that perhaps the sunset clause should be eliminated and that there should be an actual ban on Iran's uh, development of ballistic missiles that could be used for nuclear weapons, is this something that he would be happy with if it did occur? Is it something that he would be happy, I mean, perhaps 
when these negotiations begin. If they do that, he would encourage them. You know, there, there, are a lot there, of no dis there, there are a lot of discussions going on, Linda, and I think we will, uh, I will avoid uh, speculating what will be or, or won't be. I think what we're focusing on in, is how the Secretary General, uh, his position on the JCPOA as it exists now. Mr. Lee. Sure. I asked a couple of days ago if you had anything on Madagascar. So I wanted to ask you again. There have now been five days of protests. The protesters are saying that uh, former President Mark Ravoalamana cannot, uh, is being barred from running, and some protesters have been killed. And I'm just wondering. No, we're, obviously, previous concer we're obviously concerned at, the, uh, at some of the, the, the violence uh, that, that we've seen. Uh, and again, I may have something more on that a bit later. Also in Tanzania, there are protests uh, scheduled for the 26th, except that they've been outlawed by the government and several people have been arrested. Um, I'd asked you about this before. Does, does, deep, does the UN or its Department of Political Affairs, uh, is, it on, is this on their radar at all? Because I have I've yet to say a, Just about everything's about on our radar. Right. Uh, we're obviously watching the situation, and we strongly believe as a matter of principle in the right of people to demonstrate freely and peacefully. And I did want to, I think you'd raised yesterday this issue of media access uh, to UN uh, uh, protection of civilian sites in uh, in South Sudan, and uh, I just want to reiterate which I, the fact that <clears throat> the mission there supports the right of all journalists to freely and fairly report on UN activities in South Sudan. Um, journalists, including national reporters, are able to visit the protection of civilian camps, interview internally displaced people, camp leaders, and UN personnel. I think there was last, uh, in this past week, uh, journalists, both local and international, um, visited the protection of civilian sites in Juba and Bentu. Can I just a follow-up on South Sudan? Sure. I just, and I wanted to, to ask you just as, as uh, straightforwardly as possible. What is the, I mean, in the UN's mind, given that this, what was initially classified as child rape in South Sudan was downgraded to attempted sexual assault, what's the, in terms of a child, what, what, when? I think there's a uh, nomenclature that we use, which I will uh, share with you. I, the, the assessment was made, initial assessment was made, and then new information came to light, and a different assessment was made. But I will share with you the nomenclature when I'm able to. Okay. Mr. Klein. Yes, back to the JCPOA and the Security Council resolution that endorsed it. Um, in the Security Council resolution that you refer to, there is at least a call upon Iran to cease the uh, testing, development, production, procurement of uh, ballistic missiles capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Um, Iran has been, as you know, testing such missiles. Did that subject specifically come up during the Secretary General's meeting with the Foreign I've, Minister. I've uh, shared with you uh, the readout as I'm able to share it with you. But, but the, o the only reason I'm asking is you stressed on the positive side the Secretary General's uh, embrace, if you will, of the JCPOA. But the Security Council resolution endorsing it contains a provision that no one can contest that I, Iran I, I, is no, not no, been No one is contesting with. it, and I don't think anything if, that I've said uh, can be interpreted as contesting or going against it. Mr. Lee. Sure. I wanted to ask you, I'm, I, I'm sure you've seen, you may even be quoted in, but I, I want to ask you a bit more about uh, the Guardian's mm -hmm. piece about the pension fund and, and what they say is in, uh, investment in dirty profits. They list Shell, given mm -hmm. its record in Nagoni land in Nigeria, HSBC, money laundering for Mexican drug cartels. What are the standards that the UN Pension Fund applies to its investments? Uh, they're standards set by the General Assembly. Okay, Mr. So Barma, those, all so yours. Thank you. In, 